Morning everyone. I hope you can hear me properly. I'm Lisa from the Monday Morning Cooking Club, if you don't know me, and this is my daughter Jessie. Hi. Um, and since, since we are all practicing um, as much social distancing as we can, we thought it would be good if the two of us did this today. Hey Sam. Hey. So we're going to just manage as best we can. We're going to have lots of interruptions today, we think, because we don't know what's going on. But we just wanted to give you a little bit of a distraction from what's going on in the real world. I hope that everybody is keeping absolutely safe and doing what they're supposed to do. We just want to get some baking done so we can inspire you to make a batch of cookies at home. And today we're going to do the choc oat cookies from our latest book, which is now for something sweet. And I'm here with the actual the, the cook who gave us this recipe, Jessie Goldberg. So if you've got the book, you can read all about Jessie and her story. Okay. So let's start with what we need, and everyone needs to get it ready if you haven't already. So just trying to go through all the ingredients. Okay, so what we've got today, first things first, though, let's all put on our ovens, preheat it to 180 degrees. Great, so everyone's got that sorted. Um, everyone's got their oats. Why don't we start at the why don't we oh. start at the top of the recipe? It runs out there butter. Now, if your butter's fresh out of the fridge, we want it to be quite soft. So hopefully you've left it out to soften. If not, you can just chuck it in the microwave for 10 seconds till it's soft but not melted. Like we want it to be really very soft at the moment, like so you can smush it with us. Yeah, feel free guys to ask questions along the way. This is Facebook Live, that's how it works. So we've got that, we've got our brown sugar. We have it's just talk measurements. So in case in case everyone hasn't read what they need exactly, it's 125 grams, which is half a block if you're in Australia, of butter, and we use unsalted butter. And then we've got 230 grams of brown sugar. Next ingredient is one egg, which is down there. Um, a teaspoon of vanilla. We're going to use this beautiful vanilla, which I'll talk about in a sec. Um, 225 grams of plain flour, which is there. Half a teaspoon of baking powder, which is here. That's powder, not soda. Yeah, that's true. And we've got chocolate. Um, 150 grams, or it's about one cup of chocolate chips. Hi, Holly. <laughs> Hi, Holly. Thanks for tuning in. Hey, Jacob. So, and we've got 80 grams of rolled oats. So everybody needs to just measure all those things and get them ready. The butter, the sugar, the egg, vanilla, flour, baking powder, oats, and chocolate. Okay. So while everyone's just gathering all those ingredients, do you want to just repeat once again what everybody needs in case they missed it as far as the ingredients? Because everyone hopefully is cooking along with us as we go. So let's just go one more time what everyone needs. 125 grams of butter, 230 grams of brown sugar or one and a quarter cups, one egg, some one teaspoon of vanilla, 225 or one and a half cups of plain flour, pinch of salt, half a teaspoon of baking powder, some dark chocolate, 150 grams, chopped up, or we can do that later, and 80 grams of rolled oats. Great. So should we get started? I hope everyone's preheated their oven. So when I make what temperature? To 180 degrees. So when we make this normally, we use the electric mixer, but to make this more friendly for everyone, you know, maybe stuck at home without a Kenwood um, or whatever, making this anyway. It's yeah. hilarious that you said Kenwood. I mean, this is really funny because we don't have a Kenwood. Jessie's never been around. I don't know what Kenwood is. Of, yeah, it just no. felt natural. <laughs> So I don't know why she said Kenwood and not KitchenAid. See, you what, we've been around the Monday Morning Cooking Club girls too long because we talk about the Kenwood. I that's really, what, that's yeah. what we grew up with. I also really need to itch my face right now, but I'm going to not do it because Corona. Actually, we're not going to talk about Corona today. So, whew, my nose is itchy. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Okay. Hey, Rachel. Hey Taylor, hi hey, Sophie. Sophie. Okay, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna start by mixing the brown sugar with the butter. And is there anything better than just some like delicious sugar and butter mixed? No, no, no is the correct 
I think this whole thing is going to cut down on people like licking the bowl and sticking their fingers in the bowl while they're cooking, which we're all guilty of. Mm. And now we have to sort of keep out of the bowl completely. Yeah. Once in kindy, we were making, um, like, I don't know why, we were making cake at kindergarten and I got kicked out of the cake making circle because I touched my fingers into the mixture too many times. <laughs> and not much has changed since then. So, okay. how do you mix it well when, if um, without the electric mixer leaves? You just can. You just need to keep have faith that it will all come together and it will. So I'm just going to help here. Just Bye. make sure your butter's soft enough. Hey, Esther. Sorry, Jess, can I just get the butter off? And Rami's listening to me. Hey, Rami. And just smush it a bit along the sides as you go. Keep going. Keep. So Jessie's doing that. I'm going to move these out. If anyone has any questions while we're going, whatever, about anything really. <laughs> So as Jessie said, we usually do this in the kitchen aid or the kennel if that's what you've got. But it's really easy to do by hand um, and it's one bowl and one spoon. So I think it's a great thing to do. Um, if you don't have butter, you can do it with margarine. I think it would work. Um, if you've got salted butter instead of unsalted butter, that's also fine. Just, you know, whatever you've got. And if you don't have brown sugar or you've only got a bit of brown sugar, maybe do half-half or just regular sugar if you don't have brown. I'm going. Good, but like, thank God we can't go to gym at the moment because this is quite a workout. Jeanette, please. Hi, Jeanette. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, so for those of you who have just tuned in, we are making Jesse Goldberg's chocolate oat cookies from our new book, Now for Something Sweet, with the original Jesse Goldberg, who happens to be my daughter. Um, Coincidentally. And I don't want you to think <laughs> that because Jesse's my daughter, the recipe got in the book, because honestly, you've no, been asking. You've been asking for the recipe to go in the book for yeah. probably six years, and I've said no, 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 no. And it took us that long to really look at all other chocolate cookies in the world and decide that these were the best. Sam wants to know if there's a gluten-free alternative to these cookies. You know what? That's a good question, and I don't know the answer to that um, because uh, Marilyn in our group is very good with gluten-free, so we'll ask Marilyn and we'll post the answer later. But it's an excellent question. Um, it'll be worth trying to substitute gluten-free flour and see what happens. Mm. Okay, that's going Is that down. good? Keep or going. It's good oh. that she's doing the work. And hopefully at home you're all doing the same thing, either in your machine yeah. or by hand. Yeah, it's much said, easier in the machines. And if you use a machine, we use, sorry, that's about. Breezy's order. <laughs> I'll go get it. <laughs> so I'm going to keep mixing. Hi. And it is a really good, is it? I don't know, you'll have to go get the door. <laughs> Jessie's just going to go and get the door and I'll continue. I told you that things are going to be a bit a bit odd today. But it is a very odd time for all of us. Um, Miriam Millie says she loves the book. Oh, hi Miriam. Nice to see you. Miriam's one of the cooks in our book who's now watching and she has contributed the delicious Viennese Ishla biscuits which are these amazing little hazelnut rounds that you sandwich together with apricot jam and topped with chocolate. So that's Miriam's recipe in the new book. Um, and if you don't have the new book, while well, we're waiting for Jessie to come back, this is it. Now for something sweet. And it's available, delivered to your door. Try Booktopia. Just washing my hands. <laughs> um, call your local bookstore. They're all delivering. Um, it's everyone's doing as much as they can to get things sent to all of us at home. Okay, Jess, do you want to come back? No, nice Rachel says she misses you guys. We miss you, we miss Rachel. you too, Rachel. And hi, boys, who have just arrived. Welcome. And a big shout out to everyone who's just come back from overseas and is now in quarantine for 14 days. I hope that you're all okay and well and survive it. You know, just do what you can do. Get baking. Yeah. All right. I think that's good. Is everyone up to scratch with their, sorry, up to date with yeah. their mixing? Yeah. Do if you, you show them So closer? this is what it looks like. Just joking. I wouldn't do that. Um, <laughs> if you do it in the electric mixer, often it goes really nice light white colour. Um, if it's been whipped for a while, which I really like to do. But this is fine too. You made it like this a couple yeah. of weeks ago yeah, and you said it was just the same, just as delicious. Um, so I think that's probably good. Now, the next step in the recipe is we put some vanilla extract and an egg in it. Can I give a shout out to this vanilla? We're using Nielsen Massey vanilla extract, which is absolutely the most delicious thing. Um, if you 
not taste not. the vanilla of that you've bought somewhere else. I'd, I'd like you to taste it. Taste the vanilla you've got and taste this vanilla. This one you can actually eat with a spoon. It's so good. Um, and that's what you want to be putting in your food. So we're going to put in, what is it, a teaspoon? I'm not really much of a vanilla measurer. Are you? No, I just pour it in. And fun quarantine tip, if you run out of alcohol, this actually has quite a high <laughs> alcohol content. So shots of vanilla extract <laughs> to know how desperate you might get. Does it really? Yeah. Betty Nelson says she's an Aussie watching from Seattle, Washington. Oh, hey. And Venetia Kalinko says, hi, Lisa, I'm eating a bunker now. Oh, oh yum. Nice Jealous. to Love um, to love and it. nice to hear you watch, watching from Washington. I hope it's all going okay there in the States. Yeah, so we put the vanilla extract in. We're going to crack Do you mix that first or not really? Not, not really. Like, not really. You can. You cannot. Okay. And, and I mean, wants to know where to buy that vanilla. Ah, good point. Very good point. Sorry. You buy this vanilla at Simon Johnson um, in Australia. Simon Johnson, Provador, they're in Sydney, Melbourne, Perth. And they sell smaller bottles. Are you lucky to get the big ones? It's a really, it's an expensive product, but it's a really good product. Yeah. Okay, so now we're going to put the egg in. Some people obviously like to put in a glass first. We're a bit more old school here. Yeah, let's, do oh, let's do that. We're not old school. We're very new. Okay, we're going to crack it in. It's always good to put it into a glass just to make sure that there's no blood in it or anything yeah. like that, you know. Tell the story about it. I think I told it before, before, but I'll share it again. It's a crazy story. Triggers me a bit. Still gives me nightmares. But this is a poor Lisa. Are we going to uh, uh, check it for blood? Kosher. If you tell your story, she'll <laughs> come back to the story when the cookies are in the oven. No, no, I'll tell the story now. <laughs> okay. So once I was making shakshuka, which, by the way, got book number one, the Bubba Bubba's Egg Cat, the sauce, right? That's the Chachuca sauce. No, it's, no. The, it's the nudie sauce from book three. Book three, sorry for confusing you all there. Anyway, made a huge Chachuca for my friends one day. Delicious. Ten eggs deep, like cracking eggs, cracking eggs, cracking eggs, cracking eggs. Tenth egg. Sorry. <laughs> the tenth egg, cracked it, and it's a rotten egg. It stunk up the entire thing, destroyed the entire shakshuka, and turned me off eggs for, honestly, months. Yeah, so there's a good lesson. And we have told that story. I think in every Facebook Live we've done, we've told the same story. Okay, so she's mixing the egg in. Sorry, Daphne wants to know what's the name of the vanilla. It is Nielsen Massey. I'm going to bring it really close so you can see. Nielsen Massey. And it's really, really, it's Madagascar bourbon vanilla bean paste. It is excellent. Simon Johnson. So it might get a bit sloppy once we put the egg in, but mix it around and it should be fine. Until it's nice it's consistency like that. Like that. Cool. So I was just going to say the next step is to sift the flour bicarb soda, sorry, no, flour baking pa pa paper. <laughs> it's a new... New ingredient, delicious. <laughs> Baking paper, secret ingredient actually. I left it out of the book. <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> um, so you want to put the flour, baking powder, and um, salt. But I've actually, in the years that I've made this recipe, never ever sifted, sifted it. it. You know what? If you've got a sieve here, just let sift it, okay? Um, one other change we've made in our household, we always had a dish of um, sea salt out on the bench and everyone just took it all day. So that's gone now. So we're back to a grinder. So you're going to pass the grinder over. Mm -hmm. So get a sieve or, your, uh, you know, a sieve you've got or a, or a special sister. Yeah. And I've got the flour and the baking powder and the salt that you saw Jesse put in. Mm -hmm. And you just you can do it. What would you like me to do? Not like that. I see. Oh, no, just like that. Um, Nat Steiner just wanted in to the... clarify what the recipe is for. She's just tuned in. Okay. The recipe is Choc Oat Cookies from our new book, Now for Something Sweet. It's on page 28. That's it there. And we are cooking with Jessie Goldberg, my daughter, whose recipe it is. So is it, um, I, I never know this. Yeah, you um, yeah, you are you supposed to tip it in? Yeah, you are. So then, like, what is the point of sifting? It's a good question. Um, what the sifting does in this case is one light in the flour perhaps mm -hmm. but more importantly it's mix the baking powder and ah. the flour together so now i'm going to mix it all together 
starts getting a bit tough here. This is when the real muscles come out. Um, and at this point, if you were using an electric mixer earlier, after I've mixed in the egg and the vanilla essence, this is when I take it off and um, do, it by hand. do it by hand. So this recipe, I really love to make all the time. It's so easy. It's so quick. I make it for friends when like family members die or or anything. I make it um, just to eat all the time. I've actually been known to make a batch of these cookies in under 20 minutes. It was once, can confirm, it was once timed by my friends and they were from beginning to end done in 20 minutes. Yeah, so. that's a really great recipe for that. And it helps if you've always got some butter out. Um, I don't know what you guys do at home, but I always, in my kitchen, have a block of butter out in the cupboard. I mean, obviously in the heat of summer, you've got to be careful, but just so that you can always make a cake that needs softened butter at any time. Yeah. Oh, that looks great, okay. So we now have kind of a dough-like consistency, as you can see here, and it is so delicious. Honestly, if you're at home, you're just making this for yourself, not so picky about hygiene. <laughs> oh, hey, Rena. Um, okay, so the next step is my chocolate. chocolate. Okay, can I give a little talk about the chocolate? Yeah, I mean, my, many people are happy to use the supermarket um, chop chips. Um, whatever brand that is, I don't know, it's what they, whatever the supermarket brand is. Um, but we like a really good chocolate because the chocolate is the essence of this cookie. Have you left me, Jess? No. Okay, she's just washing her hands again, which is good. Um, <laughs> and we have, um, we did some work with Simon Johnson last year and we got these, we were getting these three kilo bags of this Valrhona Guanaja. Excuse my pronunciation, but it's G-U-A-N-A-J-A, 70%. And it is the most wonderful chocolate for cooking and baking. And they've just started making, which I'm really excited about, 250 gram packs of the chocolate. <laughs> yeah, she loves it. The mixture's really delicious. So they're making 250 grams of the chocolate now, so you can buy it, which is really good, because you could only buy the blocks beforehand. So the chocolate looks like this, um, and it's 150 grams. They're really, they're really yummy and good. And yeah. do you like eating these? Yeah, they're too dark for you. I love them. I think they're an adult chocolate. Yeah, and I'm just but a child. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm going to chop them. You can also use a block of chocolate. Um, you can use cooking chocolate and just chop it up. So I'm going to chop it while Jessie entertains you. <laughs> I can juggle. <laughs> Actually, can. Um, anyway. Yeah. And Daniel's now watching. Hi, Daniel. How's quarantine? She actually is quarantined. Um, Oh, hello. Well, to all of you who are stuck at oh, home. Oh, Nadine. <laughs> to all of you who are stuck at home, um, we hope that you can get some ingredients and you can actually get baking and immerse yourself in something delicious. I think that it's what we all need at this time. I mean, I'm craving jam donuts. I think I'm going to bake some on the weekend. Make mm, some on the weekend. Please do. Please do. Yeah. I would love that. So what are your, what's everyone going to make at home just to make you feel better in this time when everyone's feeling so blah? Pasta bake. I think a pasta bake is good. I think um, I think chicken soup is a good thing. We're going to do another Facebook Live um, next week. We're still everyone needs to have some time to get hold of some chicken. For that one, you're going to need um, two kilos of chicken frames or bones or wings and drumsticks and a whole chicken and some carrots and dill and one onion and then we can make soup together. Yeah. All right. I'll keep chopping. Okay. You can talk. So great cookies. Love them. Good for any occasion. Um, any questions from the audience? We'll be feeling. I've got questions. a question. Do you yeah. ever use milk chocolate or white chocolate? Oh, that's what I was going to say. Sorry, I was thinking about something. Okay. If I'm making cookies and there's like not so much chocolate at home, I'll just make do what well with whatever we've got. You know, even if it's a block of chocolate, um, it doesn't have to be chop chips. It could really be anything you find in your cupboard as long as you can chop it up. I've never tried with like other like chocolates, and my mum hates that, putting like random confectionery in delicious home cooked goods, but I feel like it would be quite delicious. What would you put in? Like Maltesers? Oh, what about like Rollo with caramel? Mm. Oh, that might be good. Or, I mean, Smarties would be, I used to like those Smarty biscuits that mm. Byron Bay yeah, company yeah, yeah. used to make. Were they, no, was it Byron Bay? Yeah. Yeah. They were quite good. So maybe we should try Smarties. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Or M&M's, I don't know which was better. Okay, so anyway. What about Raisin? What about like, oh. um, Oatmeal and raisin mm. and cinnamon. Like, make it one of those, like, oatmeal raisin. Haven't you seen those memes that, like, there's nothing more, like, 
breaking of trust and when you take into, you bite into a chocolate cookie, but it's not a chocolate cookie, it's a raisin cookie. It's suggested crunchies. I yeah, agree. I, I love crunchies. Crunchies, Maltesers. We'd love to hear from all of you whether you would like us to do more of these because really if it's going to help everybody get through this time, we're happy to do it every day. Every day. We don't you know? have jobs. I don't have jobs. She has a job actually. But we're not going to tell you what her job is because, well, we can tell her. She's actually a doctor um, and she works in an emergency at the moment. And, um, yeah, so what was I going to say? So we were actually saying that while the cookie's in the oven, should we do a Q&A, medical Q&A? But we decided <laughs> it's not at all appropriate, so we're not going to do that. Okay, chocolate's shut down. Dania suggested muesli cookies. Yeah, you know what? Yeah. Dania, that's a good suggestion because I was going to say if someone can't find oats at the moment, muesli would be great. Um, that oh, seems like the gardeners. Right. Maybe we'll go ask the gardeners to pull it up. Yeah, okay. Okay, so I was going to say if you can't get oats, um, natural muesli would work perfectly. Maybe toasted muesli would work as well. I think in these times we might have to, you know, find some other options um, to do what we need to do. Um, okay, so um, you come in and I'll go do that. We've just got to. Never mind the technical issue. Over to Jessie for a sec. Hey guys. Says yes, please do more. Do more. And Diana Levinfeld says hi girls. Hey. Um. Okay. So we've got these chopped up. We've got the oats. So the next thing we're going to do is put all the ingredients in, and then we're ready to bake. So what's the order? I don't know what it says in the book to to put the. Chocolate and oats, yeah. So you can just put them in at whatever you do. I think normally I put in the oats first, mix that around, and then add in the chocolate. So let's put in the oats. We've actually discovered, so my mum was making some chocolate chips a few weeks ago, and all of her batteries were quite flat. Or even when I make them at home, they're very um, big and plentiful and bountiful and <laughs> amazing. So what is the difference, other than the level of skill between me and my mother, is, I think that's is the type of oats. So she was actually using... Um, what are they called? Quick cook oats. They actually weren't, they were, I think they were home brand oats because we couldn't get oats one day. And so it really makes a difference to have not, you can't have quick cooking oats and you want good quality oats. So the oats get in. And remember, it's always a good idea not to overwork the mixture once you've got flour in it because it just toughens the flour. Okay, can I chuck this in? Yeah. Jeanette says, hi girls. Oh, hi Jeanette. Jeanette's another one of our cooks actually in this book and Jeanette, has given us the um, white chocolate and passion fruit mousse in the new book, and it's delicious. Um, okay, I think that's actually that looks really good. Looks okay, delicious. can you just so show everybody? I'll show you guys up close and personal. So everybody should have a mixture that looks just like that. Mm. Lick it, smell it. Ooh, and he's built that on the computer. <laughs> right. So the next thing is. This. Okay, can we just talk baking tray for a minute? This is joking. This is, there's only two things you need to use this for because you don't really want to eat it because if you tasted it, it's yum. But what it's very good for is, cook, is being used as cooking glue. So baking paper, baking sheet, or a tin that you're going to line, this is absolutely fantastic. It just holds the baking paper down and just stops it from moving. And the only other use for it where you do need to eat it is when you bake cakes in a bunt tin. We have found for whatever strange reason, this is the only thing that works, um, that just works the best. So, yeah, I know there's some contro controversy around that. And I think Natanya, it's controversy. 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 It's controversial. <laughs> if the other girls were here, we'd be having an argument about it. So I'm going to put that aside. But I'm here. So let's go, Jess, show how we do this. Okay, so I think everyone does their cookies differently, the way they put them out. You know, I'm a use my hands type of girl. I don't know if that's appropriate in this climate, but whatevs. You don't see my cookies if you don't want them, yeah, I guess. Right. Yeah. So I just like to make them like this big, just like, not well, a bit big, that big. What would you say that size is? Walnut, walnut. size? I think that's a, that's a walnut size. A big walnut. <laughs> and... Then, no, I think it's a walnut, a walnut in the shell. Then I just, and this totally depends on how lazy or not lazy or rushed I'm feeling. Sometimes I roll them into a bowl. Sometimes I just plunk them down like that. Yeah. So, so, and both times they're delicious. It's just, I think, 
Yeah. Do you I, think it makes a difference? I, I prefer them. I prefer them more rustic, actually. So, so I would just pump them down. The other day, I made a batch, and and I had to run out, and so I put the batter just like this in the fridge because I didn't have time to roll and bake them. And I came back a couple of hours later, and I also didn't have a lot of time, so I, I did that in about one minute. I just put blobs on the tray, and they were absolutely amazing. So. You don't need to be too finicky. You don't need to work them too hard. Everyone should just be doing this now. And I'm not going to help Jessie because we're doing it in real. Or maybe I will help you because we've got to put them in the oven. Yeah. Okay. Anything else we suggested maybe golf size? Oh, that's, that's actually, actually true. I don't know. I don't play golf. I did watch Happy Gilmore yesterday, <laughs> which is a golfing movie, but I haven't played <laughs> golf. Uh, <laughs> hey, Jake. He's working from home. <laughs> Oh, hey, Candice, hope quarantine's going good for you as well. So we're just going to make all these cookies. Um, and we had a bit of a debate about whether to call them cookies because, you know, in Australia we call things biscuits or bickies. We don't say cookies. But I think chop chip, yeah, we decided that chop chip could be called a cookie. Yeah. But we wouldn't want to say Anzac cookie because it's an Anzac biscuit. But chop chip cookies, it's okay. Mine are a bit bigger than yours. Doesn't matter. How many does this batch make? What does it say in the book? Uh, 35. Yeah, mine are too big. Mine are actually heading to even bigger than, I think a golf ball is a bit bigger than a walnut, so I think it's more walnut than golf ball. Yeah, maybe two walnuts for every golf ball. In no, it's not. It's about 1.3. Yeah. Say. Um, so know what you're thinking. How did I manage to write a cookbook recipe um, when I'm just a young child? Well, when I was seven, and my memory differs from my mum's recipe. Memory. Memory. <laughs> I think that I just like made up a recipe and wrote it down in a cook. We used to have this cookbook. Do we still have it? Yeah. Where with all handwritten recipes. And I'm pretty sure like when I was seven, I was just like, I had a vision of some cookies and I wrote the recipe down. But thinking back, it doesn't really make sense. So my mum discovered the real genesis of the recipe, which was Bill Granger. Bill Granger's um, uh, book. Sorry, Jess. Yeah, so Bill Granger's book. Turns out a seven-year-old Jesse was maybe a bit sly, stole the recipe, wrote it down, added some chopped chips. Did I add chopped chips or did I add oats? Oats. So no, I added oats, just that was my little secret ingredient. And that's how I came up with the most amazing chopped chip cookie recipe ever. Is that true? Yeah. And, and it is, we have actually got permission from Bill Granger, yeah. who's just the nicest guy, to um, put this recipe in the book. And okay. he is acknowledged. Okay, so that's it. Done. And I'll we're going to put them in for um, how long? Uh, so up. I put them in for 12 minutes. The book says 10 to 15. I've always found, we have a hot oven though, it works for 12. If you make them a bit smaller, you can put them in for less. If you make them a bit bigger, the key is they want to be golden, but when they come out of the oven, they're actually really soft. And then they harden up as they cool down. I've made a mistake a few times where I think, oh no, it's too soft, it's not going to work. And then they're really hard and not so nice to eat. The key to them is how soft and gooey they are on the inside. 11? Okay, 11 minutes. What did you say? 12. I said 12, but let's go with 11. So, um, let me just wipe this bench down. So it's up to all of you now. You, could, you can go away now if you want. Jessie's going to come back in a sec. But we're going to just chat about recipes and take any questions from anyone in the next 10 or 11 minutes so you can see what the cookies look like. But if you've got other things to do, you probably don't have other places to be, but you might have other things to do, so go do them. Otherwise, hang in here with us and, and ask us some questions or tell us what you've been making. I'm going to just grab the other books because I want to go through some recipe ideas for the time at the moment. So just you come in and chat. We just keep washing our hands every two minutes. Yeah. Well, now nobody's there. Oh, just my arm. Hey. Hey, guys. Um, yeah, so cookies. <laughs> Any questions from the audience? I'll, ta I'll take questions about anything except coronavirus. How are you coping with quarantine? Any questions? Okay, all right. Um, okay, so let me talk about what we should be cooking, not what we should, what we want to cook. Firstly, I am craving donuts because I don't know why. I'm just, I mean, I think we're all craving different things like hot chips or wine or alcohol, Vanilla generally, extract. or whatever it is. <laughs> but 
But I think um, at the moment I am craving things that like a comforting comfort mm. food. And to me there's nothing better than biting into a hot, freshly made jam donut. So I'm just going to find the recipe. It's in our yeasted dough chapter, which is that one, which is a beautiful chapter. And, and do you know that in our book we've got this how-to and for six we've got six how-tos in the book and this one is how to yeast so how to cook with yeast so if you're afraid of cooking with yeast and have never done it before this is the answer it's really it really shows you how simple it is so i think i'm going to start with the donuts which in the book they're, they're amazing yacht, and they are unbelievable and what i love about them is you know when a lot of donuts, the donuts are made and then they put the jam in afterwards. These these are cooked with the jam in the middle. So when you bite it, you've got to be careful you don't burn your lips. The jam's hot and, oh, can't wait. So we'll be making those over the next few days. Let's just start with our first book. For those of you who've got the first book, Monday Morning Cooking Club, there's two things we wanted to suggest to you as good things to make. The first is the fish sambal. It's on page 40. And what it is, is a, an Indonesian spiced sauce that you make ahead. So you can, if you grab the ingredients, you're gonna need um, chilies, tomatoes, spices, have a look in the book, onions, um, ketchup, manis, garlic, um, kaffir lime, lemon grass, and tamarind. So if you can grab those ingredients over the next few weeks, you can make up a batch of this sauce, you can put it in the freezer in, in your containers, and then all you need to buy are some fresh fish fillets and you heat the sauce up and you just slip the fish fillets in and cook them for 10 minutes or, and there's dinner and we love it. I yeah, mean, it's, it's my it's, favorite thing to eat. It's healthy, it's delicious. Yeah. And like people don't eat fish. You can use chicken as well. Yeah. Don't we sometimes use chicken? Yeah, but I think chicken's hard to get at the moment than fish for some strange reason. Yeah. But, and, but lovely snapper fillets. Um, it's mm, really, really nice. Divine. Make some steamed rice, some, um, some greens on the side it's really good so that's my number one recommendation for weeknight dinners from the book and if there is the, the request from all of you we'll be happy to do it maybe we might yeah. do it the other favorite and sorry just a quick yeah. idea with that as well if you know people in quarantine you can also cook up some sauce for them drop yeah. it at their house and yeah. it's a really easy transferable dish yeah. with the fish do you drop and you drop the raw fish or do you oh. cook it for them dinner depends i guess depends, on their situation guess, yeah, yeah. Um, and then we've got Booba's eggplant, which is probably one of the favourite recipes in the book. And Booba's eggplant is a, you make a tomato sauce and then you fry off some eggplant, but we don't fry it anymore. We actually slice it, spray it with oil or paint it with oil and ro roast it in the oven instead of frying it off. It's just easier and less messy. And then you layer it with the sauce and you cook it. And oh, it is divine. It's, it's really our family favourite. Yeah. And um, if we're feeling a bit like just something more delicious, we put some pasta, cook some pasta, mix it in with the eggplant, put lots and lots and lots and lots and lots and lots of cheese on it. Like buy some little bocconcini cheese and chop it up and yeah. some shredded tasty and some parmesan and then you bake it in the oven with no cover, no foil or anything and then it gets all crispy and delicious. It's delicious. That's a good recipe. So that's what was eggplant, page 71 from the first book, Monday Morning Cooking Club. Um, second book which is the feast goes on um i'm actually making for dinner tonight for my family a thing called chicken to beat um we had it before not for not for years since we tested for the book um my friend jody who i played bridge with she's a great cook hi jody if you're watching and she has been making lots of one pot dishes lately and it's amazing to go and she just puts it on in the afternoon or in the morning and it's got chicken and veggies and rice and everything in mm, one pot and it's yeah. a really good way to eat. So I want to get more of that one pot thing happening in our kitchen. And so I'm going to make the chicken to beat um, tonight. And what it is, it's basically a spiced rice with a chicken cooked in it for four hours. It's going to go in at 2 o'clock or 2.30. And I'll put pictures on our Insta stories of what it looks like and hopefully it'll be as delicious as the photo. One of my favourite photos in the book. Yeah, actually. that looks so um, yum. It's really delicious, and it's really a dish from the old world when when people used to live in you know smaller towns and they used to get their dinner ready before the Sabbath on a Friday and they used to put it in their pot and take it to the local um, baker baker who had the oven and they put it in the oven overnight and next day after synagogue they pick it up and there's lunch. So. It reminds me of the old world a bit, which is nice. So that's from the feast goes on. And then... Um, oh, we have, a, we have a question. I just have two questions. 
Yeah. This one from Danya. She wants to know what's the secret to a chewy cookie. Good question. And it's something that generations and generations have been searching for. Anyway, but I think I found the answer. <laughs> I think the number one thing that will not make it chewy is overcooking. Yeah. And I think you you mustn't. They're not going to be hard when you when you take them out of the oven. I think so, I, yeah. someone made a batch the other day um, when we were in Perth, and they said that they touched them out of the oven and they were soft, so they put them back. So what they got were really hard, crunchy yeah. cookies, which is not what you want. So undercook, and they'll be chewy. Yeah, and it gets light on the flour. And another question: Susan Jacobs says she couldn't get plain flour yesterday and wanted to make the cinnamon swirl coffee cake. She has plenty of wholemeal flour. Do you think she could have substituted for that flour? Thank you, and she loves your work. <laughs> I, um, I think in these times we have to try everything, and I think wholemeal flour will absolutely be fine. I might, because wholemeal flour I think soaks up a bit more liquid than plain flour. I can't remember off the top of my head what liquid is in that cake. I guess we can have a look. Can you look it up in this book? It's um, cinnamon coffee cake in that book. It might be worth adding a touch more of the liquid. And I'm sorry, I can't remember off the top of my head what's in it. Um, have a look, Jess. It's got a very good index in this book, actually. And in the new one, you can look up gluten-free, dairy-free. Oh, yes. Did you know that those of you who have got the new book, at the back of the index, we've got a whole list of all the dairy-free, all the gluten-free, and all the Passover things. Oh, this is the new book. <laughs> okay. What are we looking at? What, what's in the recipe? Uh, what liquid is in there? Butter, does that count? No. Eggs, vanilla extract, sour cream. Maybe, would you add a bit more sour cream? Yeah, you know what, I, I, I don't know if anyone out there's got an idea of what to do. No, that's but not. Maybe I would add um, another egg, I wonder. Um, try it with another egg and see how it goes. Yes. Um, it won't be bad, it just might be on the dry side and maybe the egg will help that. But I think wholemeal will be great. Mm. And um, healthier. Yeah. So let's not start on it. Yeah. Because, like, I had a bagel the other day, and I thought if I order a wholemeal bagel, it's, it's healthier. I think that's that true. I think that some wholemeal flours are processed as much as plain flours, but the idea mm -hmm. is that they're um, supposed to be less processed and refined, and the whole grain, but. Like me, less processed and refined. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let me talk about one more recipe that I'm going to make this week, and that is Ooh, yeah. um, the ricotta and spinach nudies. They're nudies there. Um, people are finding it a bit hard to get meat and chicken because everyone's overstocking, which is crazy. We need to stop the hoarding and just buy what we need. Um, and so this is the spinach and ricotta nudie, and it's basically a dumpling, a gnocchi, made with spinach ricotta and flour and it's a really delicious delicious family weeknight dinner or whatever whenever you want to do it but what i want to talk about was that essential sauce that goes with it which is this one which jesse was talking about earlier oh that's exactly so this is on page can i read that what does that say one, one eight nine one eight nine. nine eight nine it is amazing it i is use what? it we make it for everything we just make a batch use it for pasta make a batch I add some cumin and some paprika, make it for so shakshuka. So can you just talk about that, what, what you make, what you put in it exactly? Okay, so pretty much we often have like a batch of it ready every month or so. We have like lots and lots of um, tubs. Tubs is the word I'm looking for of it in our freezer. Now what I like to do is if I'm having pasta, I'll grab one out. But if I'm having shakshuka or I want to make a big batch of shakshuka for friends, which I wouldn't do now because I wouldn't want to have a lot of friends over being socially responsible, is get it out, um, defrost it, put it in a frying pan, melt it down, then put some cumin, put some paprika. And how much have you got an ounce? Nah. Like a teaspoon of each? A teaspoon of each, a teaspoon, uh, I don't know, I kind of just do it yeah. by taste. So cumin. I like cumin. Yes. Yeah. Cumin. wants to know how long do you make before she missed that part? Oh, 12 minutes, 10 to 15, based on your oven. I, I usually do 12, but you want to take it out when your um, cookies are still soft but golden. Here, actually, this has been just over 11 minutes. So let's, oh, yeah, so ready. these look perfect. So I'll show you what they look like and I'll touch one just to show you that it's actually going to be still soft. They look really good. And I hope yours are looking the same if you're just pulling yours out of the oven too. So, as you can see, they're golden, they're thick, they're bountiful. 
Can I put this down on this? Yes, you can. Um, and you'll see when I touch it, like it's you can fully soft. go through it. So you think that's not ready, that's not ready. It's ready. So oh, you're that's... waving around the knife. So they're the cookies done, and um, I just want to show you close up what they look like because they really look nice. And what I love about using chocolate that you chop rather than chocolate chips is that you get these big blobs of chocolate. And you see that? They're really yummy. Mm -hmm. And in about 10 minutes, I think they'll be at the ideal eating temperature when they're just warm. Anyway. That's um, it for today, I Any think. other questions, Tori? Sorry, I'm not pushing you out. I just want to keep... Um, no, Meredith suggested that organic flour is a good alternative. Um, and Jackie says, great yep. to see happy things in this crazy moment in our life. <laughs> Jackie in Canada. Thanks, Jackie. Thanks, Jackie. And thanks, Meredith. Um, every, all the suggestions are great. Um, that's, that's Sorry, that's my husband who's actually gone a bit loopy with all this. <laughs> And we'd like to give a home. big thank you to our nurse by day, assistant by night, Tori Morris, sitting outside, quarantining beautifully. And I want to give a big shout out now to all the healthcare workers, since we have two in this room, Tori, who's a nurse at the Children's, and Jessie, who's now um, in emergency at Prince of Wales. Just a shout out to all of you out there. You're doing an amazing job and, you know, I hope that we are prepared. <laughs> Anyway, <laughs> so I would love your feedback. If you want more of these, I'm happy to do it every day if you like yeah. our rambling. Anyway, see you all. Just you sign off. I'm going to go and press the thing okay. so, you know, we don't have all good in that. Okay. Thanks all. Hope your cookies so, are great. Post them on Instagram or yeah, Facebook. Yeah, tag, tag us. Um, we'll share it. Farewell. It's still going. <laughs>